some might consider the European bison as a refugee species. Pushed out of its optimal habitat and prevented from going back to what used to be its ideal home in historical times. Pulled into a suboptimal habitat and converted into a refugee species in a natural terrain from which it doesn't originally belong, the European bison was pushed into the forest and now active management keeps it there. However, the largest terrestrial mammal in Europe shouldn't be exclusively considered a forest dweller. Recent research revealed that its origin is not only a closed canopy, but that it rather enjoys living in a mosaic landscape. How did European bison become a refugee species? Firstly, the European bison adopted a strategy of avoiding predation by humans. Secondly, it is possible that European bison were involved in maintaining open habitats, a role later taken up by agriculture, which pushed them further into the forest. And lastly, they are victims of a shifting baseline syndrome. This syndrome occurs when over a long period of time, the accepted natural baseline notion of a species is pushed further and further away from the original optimal habitat, ultimately confining it to a deficient living area. What each generation accepts as an optimal habitat is what they observe in their lifetime, resulting in the former suboptimal habitat to be perceived as the species' ideal home. How can we know the European bison is a refugee species? Firstly, in the case of the European bison, it has experienced severe declines in its historical geographic range and habitat use. This was partly due to the expansion of forests after the last glaciation due to climate warming, in combination with increased human settlement. In spite of conservation efforts, the species maintains a slow population growth rate because of its current suboptimal habitats. Furthermore, compared with their close American relatives, the European bison appears to be atypical in its habitat. Forests are not optimal habitats for bison. They don't offer enough food for such large herbivores in winter. Keeping the European bison in suboptimal habitats is not without risks to the species. For example, provision of supplementary feeding to support the bison through the winter habituates it to human interference and creates winter clusters around feeding sites. This can result in contamination by parasites and a higher vulnerability to diseases. From this perspective, European bison can benefit from management that is not only based on short-term observations of the species as a forest specialist. More robust long-term data should be considered for the conservation of the species. This could mean introducing the bison to more optimal habitats, such as mosaic or open habitats, where there is no need for supplementary feeding. Management needs to take into account the European bison and its environment as a whole. The forest might well have been the European bison's last resort, but it is certainly not the place it can naturally call home. Nevertheless, with combined efforts from all stakeholders, this species can thrive in optimal habitats once again.